So we are live. Greetings, everybody. Sani Bonani, Absheni, Machiron, Dumelang, Bahai, Dumelang, Bahai, Su, San Bonani, Hotep, and Makoa. He's going to tell us what Makoa has been. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, but he will give us some of the uh, uh, native languages of Southern Africa, the original language, uh, the most ancient ones. Uh, he will give us a bit of, uh, I will ask him direct questions about what does this mean? Has seen this and this? Because even the way the words are written for me, uh, the, the, the sign and the Bushman language, uh, the coin, the Nama, all these languages, the sign language, it looks like a science, looks like mathematics to me. So he's going to give us, towards the end of our conversation, he's going to break it down for us, just a few things, you know. We're going to speak about conservation, we're going to speak about environmental preservation, we're going to talk about uh, harmonious harvesting, we're going to talk about hip-hop, conscious hip-hop, which that's what brought us together, me and him, the streets, as he likes to call it, you know, reality in the streets. Uh, since the theme for this Tehuti session is writing your destiny, we'll talk about that that, that kind of stuff. About the power of writing, the power of creative arts. Uh, we've got Q. Q, we call him Q. Uh, he's known as Q7, Q7 Beckett. Uh, his other name is Craig, uh, which we, I have never used, uh, but it's there. It's part of the ID, like Menzi or Trevor, which is one of my names. Um, uh, we call him Q. I call him Kadir. And Kadir for a reason, because me and him, uh, we used to have a lot of deep conversations over issues of uh, uh, mystical Islam and mystical uh, uh, Sufism and uh, that's deep spiritual stuff that goes beyond your typical religions, you know. So in that aspect, I would call him Kadir. He will know why. Um, uh, Hugh Peckett, welcome, my brother. Greetings. Great, uh, my brother. Yes, oh, it's my toa. Okay, now you say, I want you to say it. If it's in the morning, so then it's um, Kayos. Kayo? Kayos. That is yeah, Nama. You see. And if you narrow, it's, it's Kayo. Kayo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Siabing Elela, Siabing Elela. In those uh, okay. magical, uh, mystical language of our of the original people of the land. Uh, my name is Menzi Masego. I'm with Mankosi, Mankosi. Can you say hi before we get into the meditation and the and the pledge? Uh, thank oh. You. oh, greetings, greetings, everybody. Oh, but it's two mancoses. I must differentiate now. Yeah, we are saying mancosi must be, but the other mancosi is also greeting. So mancosis, you can decide which mancosi goes first. <laughs> I'll let my older sister greet first and then I will greet the people after. You literally got me off guard, but Sunborn, uh, I hope the Sunday is good. Uh, greetings, everyone. <laughs> one black love, one black love. Yeah, Mankosi, then, number two. <laughs> Kulizani, greetings, beloved. Um, Omajamini, Ishubla Tala, Wagongwane, Ishubla Jendeskano Bamba, Togoza. Togoza, Koko, Togoza, Koko. Eh, we give thanks. Um, all right, we give thanks. Oh, and then Mang. Oh, the other one is greeted already. Okay. Um, Kitala Oguazi, can we just be quiet? And take a moment of silence in remembrance of our ancestors, in remembrance of the great ones that led the bloody conflicts fighting to defend this land against the aggressors. We remember the warriors, we remember the healers of old. We remember all Gokonomkulu, those who are below the ground and those who are above as stars and there's elements in the ether. We like to remember them in this moment. And we take a deep breath and we hold it for four seconds and we release it through our mouth. As we meditate this way, we like to welcome our ancestors to assist us in this work. We like to welcome the great ones, the great spirits who came before 
even we were created as flesh. The, the divine beings, Abakulu Basakem, Omkulu no Goko, or Koko. You take a deep breath in. Hold it. With your mouth, release it. You take another one. Hold it. Ask for attention, for wisdom to be present in this place. And you release it. You take another deep breath in. And ask for generations present and generations to come to be present in this place, to sanctify this space, to fill it with love, compassion, wisdom, and power. And we release. Take just one more breath. And release. And we give thanks to the word, the sound, and the power of the Almighty within us, the Almighty in nature. And we give thanks. So now we are about to recite the pledge with the pledge for those who are joining for the first time. We recite the pledge after me. I say the words and we repeat them back to each other, call and response. In this call and response, we are responding to nature and we are part of nature. It's a pledge upon ourselves and a pledge on mother and father nature. Uh, so we say Singabela, oh, you can release your mic and mute so that we can say it together. Singabela, we are healers. Singabela, we are healers. We are healers. We owe our gift to nature, our ancestors and our creators. We owe our, we owe our gift our to nature, our, our ancestors and our creators. We live by the principles of Ma'at Unu Ubuntu. We live by, we live the, by the principles, by the principles of, of Ma'at, Ma'at Unu Ubuntu. We will approach each other with respect, honesty, and compassion. We will approach, we will approach, we will approach each other uh, with respect, respect honesty, and compassion. We will offer our advice, recommendations, and ideas with trust. We will offer we will our offer advice, recommendations, re and ideas with, ideas with trust. We will neither insult, dishonor, nor abuse one another. We will neither insult, we will neither insult dishonor, nor abuse, or abuse one, another. one another. We will share, practice, promote, and raise awareness about natural healing. We will share. We will share practice promote promote awareness about, awareness natural, about healing. natural healing. Healthy lifestyles and well-being. Healthy lifestyles Healthy and well-being. We will refrain from posting negative information. We will refrain we'll from refrain posting from posting negative, negative information. We will refrain from posting irrelevant information and falsehood. We will refrain, we will from, refrain from posting irrelevant information and falsehoods. Singabela P, we are healers. Singabela P, Singabela P, we are healers. Our gifts are a gift to humanity and nature. Our gifts, Our gifts are a gift to humanity and nature. And nature. We will give back to nature what it has abundantly given us. We will give back, we'll to, give nature back to nature what, what it, has, it abundantly has abundantly given us. Ashe. Aige, Togozan Makos, Nani Nonke, Balaleli. We give thanks. So today we're just going to jump into it uh, and, 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 and then introduce our special guest today, the brother that I've been talking about uh, bringing into this platform for a very long time. I'm glad that we are having this conversation. Uh, please prepare, take some notes, prepare some questions and some comments, and feel free to comment on our Facebook space. 
uh, feel free to comment on the Zoom for those who are here within. Uh, the, we, some know the protocols there, but the reaction button, you can always raise your hand if you have a pressing question, but otherwise there will be. After 30 minutes or so, we're gonna have a, 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 a pause and get everyone to say their piece, to make a comment or to make a question to Q and um, uh, or to the, the rest of us, because it's a community and we are just having a conversation. Um, we give thanks for life. Uh, Kadir, my brother, welcome. Hi, brother. Yes, my brother. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right, my brother. I'm doing all right. Uh, we, we come from far. I'm not sure if Sister Cesar knows uh, or you know her. She used to come to, she used to be a member of the nowadays poet. She used to, big, tall lady, beautiful uh, and gorgeous and pretty and wise. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, she now lives uh, 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 in Bloemfontein. No, Bloemfontein, where are you, Coco? You are there somewhere in the I'm desert. I'm in Kimberley, food. I'm in the Northern Cape in Kimberley. She's in the Northern Cape in the place uh, what they call Kimba. In, Who's, in this Kimba? Who's this Kimba? I don't know. Uh, it's the diamond know, keeper. Eh? It's the diamond keeper. It's so the diamond thief. It's the mm. diamond thief. Okay. Exactly. You, you, we're going to talk about a bit about those uh, Northern Cape areas and we see what are going there and why uh, medicine. We want to talk about herbs today, plants, preservation, whether there's over harvesting or under harvesting and who's doing it and what can be done about it by healers and things like that. But I would like to start here, Brother Q. Yes, brother. How did you get here? I know you as an MC, I know you as a hip hop guy, I know you as a producer, I know you as a person who writes, I know you as a person who's a researcher. Once upon a time, you had one of the best clubs in Devon called Heads and Treads. You know, how does a club owner, gangster looking brother end up a, 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 a becoming a, a healer and an advocate for the rights of the bush. Well, brother, first of all, Stand first it of all, it wasn't a club. It wasn't a club. Oh, it wasn't a club, I know. It was a space. Nah, I don't know, you talk about it. It was green, it was a, it's a hip hop green safe zone. You saw we it never had alcohol there. It was a safe no. zone, urban safe zone, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Heads and dreads, it was called. What year was that? Um, that was between 2004 to 2006. You see, so uh, you've been doing this, but before that, you've always been in hip hop. Why hip hop, my brother? Why not quite do in house? Well, how did you get into hip hop? Let's start there. It started in Johannesburg. You know, um, I come from a rough background. Um, Predominantly, my family are Bushmen. They're from Namibia, Botswana, the Northern Cape. And, you know, the struggle had my grandparents in the heart. So they resulted in owning a Shabin. And at this Shabin, I met some of the greatest names I know in music today. Jazz. I mean, it was old people, you know, Sophia Town people. Used to chill with my grandfather. And in that, I mean, I met the sister Brenda Farsi as a, as a kid. She came to my house a couple of times. It was just Shabin life was an amazing experience. But at the same time, it was split in, in Riverly. In the same time, it was split in half because my grandma was a church person and a spiritual person. And grandpa was like, you know, these G's with suits on, riding car taxis from JP Town to wherever, you know. And then you have the Shabin. The Shabin brought home many people. Basutu people, Zulu people, Benda people, because it was that time of the struggle between my age from birth to, to say 10 years old. I met men today that I see their son in Zimbabwe. I never knew that. And I get told, no, you remember that man has visited, that was actually his father, blah, blah, blah. So I started growing up in Zimbabwe in a way where I knew what was happening in the world. And in this, I couldn't find it in Kwaito. I couldn't find it in dancing. I found it in graffiti, I found it in BMXing, I found it in, you know, chilling in Hillbro, in street, playing basketball at Pond Beach, when it was still these things which we could visit, you know, Rocky Street, Mendoza chilling at Times Square, we chilling at Times Square, 
It was that place. None of us had name, fame, expresses of this natural world. In that, I was also this child that was raised as a bushman, understanding how nature talks, what, what is people, how to not pick up lies in society because we don't, we don't teach our children how to pick up lies. We pick up paths, you know, patterns in nature. And those patterns in nature, I found, led me to hip hop. It was a safe place for me. I had a, a mind I could not dilute, but I had to translate what I see the way I took it. I chose hip hop. Okay. We started chilling in great places. You know, you and I both know Rippington, La Club, ground level, the, the base. These were places that started shaping not just the healer in me, but the man I became today. Okay, I get it. Uh, uh, so what, what was it? Again, you know, as a young man growing up in River Lee, uh, at that time, I know you say you were raised by Bushmen, but you see, in the typical sense in South Africa, uh, when you a person thinks about a Bushman, even the word Bushman, you know, as I told you before we came here, some people will say, no, I prefer to be called Koi or San, or Koi and San, or, or Nama, maybe those language group or whatever. When you say Bushmen in the twin, in, in the in in contemporary South Africa, most people will take it as a as a negative word. How did you experience Bushmenness amongst African people, you know, African people, other African fellow Africans here, yeah, uh, 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 where you were growing up in Tripoli? Tell me, tell us about your childhood before you even maybe get into hip hop. Well, first of all, of I come from a I come from a family of a grandfather travel a lot. So you're talking about my grandfather speaking all the languages, all the Bantu mm. and Guni languages. And it was very important for me to understand why. He always had an idea that, you know, he says always, like birds, you have a lot of them. But when fear comes, they all fly together. When something scares them, they all fly together. That's when all birds speak one language. Yeah. You understand? So it was about that, me learning. And growing up in Tripoli, Anybody that knows Johannesburg River knows we're on the doorstep of Orlando, deep blue, further into Soweto. But it wasn't that that, that got our community with language. We are a community that was raised with Zulu people, with Basutu people, with Swana people, predominantly Basutu and Swana people. And I can honestly the say- The of Sophia Town somehow. Sophia Town, yes. Yeah. Clip Town, Sophia Town. Well, we don't know if it's Clip Town and Sophia Town. If, if you talk to a brown person about these areas, we know Farakayar and Death Valley, names that, 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 that would be scary for you, but for us, it Local. translates a different thing. Kersi Dorp, things like that. To us, Kersi Dorp, Clip Town. You're going to say Clip Town, we say Kersi Dorp. Because still, to oh. this day and age, people are using candles. You understand? And not just anybody, Bushman people. No? Tell me something you know, here. Yeah, the word colored. We're going to get into those yeah, we're words. Not colored. Like, we're not colored. That's why we pre prefer you calling me a Bushman. So you prefer I Bushman mean, or colored? Which one? I, I come from a day and I come from a day and age where I sat in the Shubin and my grandfather's bra walked in eight up the Wuhan of Bushman. My grandfather looks up and says, I stray dark. Mm, mm, that word bushy mm, and darky. That bushy and darky to me is like red and milk. But Bushy I'm not going to add darky, yeah, straight up. Where you okay, going? I'm going to my darky bras. My darky bras, where, where you're going now, we're going to my bushy bras. They would never say uh, colored. Oh, they okay, I get it. Colored. In River Lee, you would know who's colored, who's bushy. Who's, it was only plain to see because the mannerisms. The way but we people intermarry. People, people have relationships across those the yeah, identities. Well, Correct, you can, but when you know your, your, your clan, Nama people sounds a certain way. Go to El Dorado Park, majority of the people you see in El Dorado Park are Nama people. Now, Nama is people from Namibia. Namakwa land, Namibia, Northern Cape, Uppington, okay. that area. When you hear their slang, you'll pick mm. up who they are. When you hear the Joburg slang, you'll pick up who we are. The Durban slang, the Cape slang. Because these slangs are not slang. To y'all, it is slang. To us, it's code of our indigenous language. It's just a code. Word you, yeah, like for example, nah, 
how you know that was nah. That but was nah. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not slang. Mm -mm. It's my language. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, before yeah. I take the question, before I take the comment here, I want to ask you something. Where are they healers in? You know, people who typically say, you know, amongst the Zulus, or amongst the Tuana, among the the typically Bantu uh, peoples, you'll get yeah. a, you know, in that house and in that house, in that house there's a Sangoma, and in that house there's a there, there, there's a Nyanga, or or or, yeah. or or in that house there's a, a, a Ngwedi. So within the so-called colored communities, Bushmen communities. Would they be people? How would you identify someone who is a spiritual or a herbal healer? Easy. Was there such a thing where, as you grew Easy. up? Easy. Yes. They were all over the place. Let me change the subject. Okay. All right. Please mute your mic, a person who's just coming. Please tell me, expand they more on that, please. All right. Nancy, you know, I grew up like this. Look at this. Even though what was my setup? My basic rules and my rites of passage at home as an urban bushman started with how to recognize when I'm in trouble. Who would I need? Not what would I need? Okay. So we have midwives in my community. We have mm. herbal so in my community. Yes. We have people who read or divine or oracle. We mm -hmm. have people where you consult, maybe you need to speak because that's also a different form of healing. These things people call today. Um, how can I say, the many facets of their well-being and whatever they practice. We yeah, have holistic things that we still have. Exactly, yeah. holistic eating. So we have this practice. These practices are not unique in the sense of I have people search for somebody. The only thing I need to do is ask the nearest person near me, excuse me, who's the oldest person? The elders. You understand, my brother? The elders. Mm -hmm. And you'll find, they'll say, okay, what would you need? Mm. This is now deciphering your needs of what type of healer you are. Maybe you're mm -hmm. not feeling well. Then the person you speak to, if that person's old enough and experienced enough, will explain to you, let's go to the yard. Go look mm. for this plant and look for that plant. Now, this is as a kid. When it's a spiritual thing, yes, you go again to somebody and it be just so there was never somebody out of their rites of passage. Where mm. we were. The people okay, from Namibia right. that was mixed with us knew their medicine. We, I, I used the first thing I used to do is wake up for, for her. That was one of my things in the morning for my grandma. Which one's for diabetes? Which one's for high blood pressure? Um, on the way to school, what to eat so that I don't get hungry by lunchtime? We didn't so now, no, excuse me, you're talking about urban. Sorry, I, I hear, I see your hand, uh, it can't be, but I just want to get into this quickly before I forget. Um, you're talking about an urban community. Uh, yes. I know that Joburg is an urban bush. You know, it's a big bush, uh, uh, um, depending on where you are. But in some places, yeah. it's like a lot of concrete. You know, in some places, there's not a lot of natural right. things growing in the wild on your way to school or on your way to work. How yeah, does I mean, a bushman, how does a bushman adapt the bush life to the urban concrete life and still be able to obtain the, well, the, the maybe same if, kind of medicine. If you look at where we brown people were placed in South Africa, it was very uniquely placed. But into we group placed, areas act. Mm. No, beyond that, brother, beyond that. I'm talking about the building of mining, the building of, 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 of the infrastructure of Johannesburg. Industrially, okay, okay. When we moved to where we are, it didn't look like what you are seeing. Mm. These were fruit farms, these were hunting grounds. These were places on the fringe of Johannesburg that was quite fruitful. Even mm. though we had mines and mine dumps, we, we, I could walk out by, from the age from birth to say 19, I could walk out of my house every morning and come home with more than five fruits. Herbs. Fruits to eat. Fruits, okay, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking the apple, y'all know, I'm talking big apple, big mm. one. Peaches you know, and, and berries yeah, and now, now due to due to how Johannesburg was set up, you had your mine managers, you had your supervisors, then you had your supervisor staff, and then, then you had your your laborers staff. Then you get so where to the slaves straight up. You understand? We were yeah. living more closer to where the under the supervisors were. 
so we have good ground do you understand i mean class i still planning. remember capital like, is class like, planning exactly i remember 10 years old between 10 and 16 in rivoli knowing there was a white farmer up the road the springbok in the yard mm. so say that again really had, he had springbok up in the yard between rivoli and langlaagte is a mine called mm. george harrison there was a white mm. man living on that and he had a wildlife he wasn't racist or anything but you know he used to scare us with, with just big dogs but we knew that he had game on the land mm. so we did mm. see red buck and i mean the job of you see today i don't think you can go to walter sulu park or any of the boy and still see animals we saw animals zebra very interesting buck, point kudu kudu we used to see this is in a city this is not going out of job you ride a 30 minutes in job to see a wildlife in johannesburg you don't see that in any you understand so we did grow up with green zones so I being a bushman fully. being a bushman in joburg wasn't that hard i get it i wasn't get it hard. and you do not have to be a bushman to be a bushman <laughs> no <laughs> but and, and, and this, is, this is the cradle to. this is the cradle of humanity we are from here I get it I get it we're going to get back to that and go deeper into why family. people are over harvesting yeah. uh, can i take mancos's hand uh mancos ngiko nama yes i was saying to gozilem cool um yeah, <laughs> as um brother q was talking eh uh, umkul i i i i i had a question in mind you know because um we have been conditioned um us as a south african people that you see the talent nation uh, is the colored nation and um most of the people who are bushmen koisen or sen or koi have been classified under being colored the, the the government has still not fixed it yet in terms of being classified according to their nativity if the okoy you should be classified as koi but that's a story for another day you know um touch on so, it today <laughs> yeah not we will get into it one day one day one day but the the thing is being in that type of environment we have been conditioned us as a people who stay in south africa that those people they don't have a sense of culture you know like identity people, unified identity tradition not necessarily oh. called a tradition you know and um brother q speaks about them having traditional healers and what i just want him to educate people oh. in terms of what it looks like to be a traditional healer in the environment because oh. we go through our own initiation we've got um, uh, isango and then we've got before i became isangoma i was a herbalist you know and but it was ikeza before it was i was okay. you know a herbalist a, in the strictest sense of the word that i dream about medicine and then i go those people are not called sangomas they are called a uh, yeah yeah so in 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 his way what when when you speak about um a A, a healer in your community how does that please paint that picture for us so that we educate our people today that the colored nation is not just the people who were born from uh, the breeding of white men and black and, and a black man part of the african fabric yes yes yeah. so Origin. yeah i just want us to reeducate our people what that they Thank you my sister that's a beautiful question thank you and it's a very important question because everybody think if you brown and you call yourself a healer that you qualify to say that no you don't there is something you do go through and this is the greatest part of as bushman people how we see it. not just one clan i'm talking about when i say southern african native sam all the clans we have different rites of passage but each rites of passage is uniquely the same but they are only articulated differently and the world's view is all the same but again articulated differently due to the semantics 
And if you remove the semantics, it's complex what I'm about to explain. I, for example, grew up with her. So you, you would have a grandmother. I understand the Tuasa, I understand pretty much not everything about the Bante and Gomi, but the steps you should be taking. We don't have such steps only until a very later stage, but it starts with your rights of passage, understanding how to survive with nature, survive with the community, and understanding your stance with nature. Now that's not survival. For example, when we are born, when we are, we are small, we don't belong to one mother, we belong to mothers. These mothers all teach us different values of life, how to grow up. Within this, you become a huntsman, a healer, a pathfinder, all these things. They are not departmented separately. It's, it's not like that. That is also a further time in your spiritual experience. You're, you're finding your calling or your path. As you go older, you have the opportunity to increase either being a huntsman. When it comes to a healer part, you start acquiring the knowledge of further grandparents and other people within your family and clan. Then comes a point in time, say by the age of 17, 18, and you have practically spent time in the bush. You understand your rights of passage as a man, how to respect the woman, what plants are used for healing, what plants are used for feeding, how to forage these things. Then you have an opportunity now to go see prime healing circles. These prime healing circles are unique, uh, made out of great old ladies, old men, some very young, some even in infant form, but they are all blessed in a way that receives healing. We become not the blessing, but the blessing flows through us. We are mediums, if you want to call it that in a modern sense. In this circle, to become one of them, you need to spend time with them. This can take up to, say, 10 to 25 years of your life, if not your entire life. We do things like going to trance, yeah, being the highest form of the trance. These trances, much like when you hear the South American talk, they see these colors and they see these chevrons and these patterns and you find it in our beading. We don't just make any beading. This is coming out of a trance. This is representing water and frontier, which means the snake, the water snake. You understand? Things you're going to find in your culture and traditions as well. Since we've been practicing this since the dawn of time before time. So you find that in this circle of old people, you will find that people that do spiritual work. When I say spiritual work, I practically mean what everybody laughs about when we talk always, shape-shifting from man to animal, from spirit to other spirits, understanding the difference of taking an illness out of a human being and curing it in another person because that person is strong enough to take that treatment. These are things reached in clear, which is a form of healing we can't even discuss because it's something that should be present and experienced. This comes from years of training. It revolves around evoking trance through learning your clap, learning the dances. These sounds create things that we can't normally in our life. When you find in the Twasa, you find people that heal through their voice, the drumming, all the, we have all that in one. In one person, you could partake in all that. It depends what are you needed for at that time in the circle, in the healing circle. You are not in control of it when it chooses what to use of you. And in this, I can play your recordings where you hear not, not even talk language. We start making uh, oh, uh, sounds that you can't really translate, yet it's part of a higher sense of the language. I always tell people that when you're small, the native language you speak, it's not the same language you speak when you become an adult. And when you become an elder, that language is matured in such a way where your heart can just work. So what happens when you become spiritual? You start using the, the, the most minute of language, no semantics in it. I'm talking, I've sat with 120 year old healers. All you hear is, uh-uh, mm, 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 mm. 
And you must understand these things because it's part of our language spiritually. So to become one, to say you are a healer, the sun, tradition, or bushman, you need to understand your entire rights of life, even the crossing over. You're not so Q, limited to I, this. Excuse me, are you saying that the, these communities exist within the Gauteng community? Let's say, for example, in Gauteng, or you are a yeah. colored person in, 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 in Durban, and you are experiencing yeah. dreams that you cannot explain to your pastor, for example, or to your mother, or to your family, or to your friend. Like Mankos was saying, as for, for, for Abenguni, Nguni people and Bantu people in general, yes. they say, okay, I know where to go to. You are saying also yes. the, the indigenous people of Southern Africa, Abatwa, as we call, uh, 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 as we call the Bushmen, Abatwa. Uh, they have a place to go. Are there communities? Uh, my question, I'm sorry, my question is leading also to the uh, a, a, a secondary question about some of the activism that you are involved in. You are involved as a leader and as an activist on uh, uh, for native people somewhere else. I think it's I I I X Y. So I'd like to answer I the question. Africa. I Y X Africa. So I want to I want you to speak on that on the second part of the of my question. My question is two pronged. The first one is. Does a typical young colored child know where to go to? That, do they have the re, uh, institutions that they can go to? I know you ex, what you're explaining now is the process no of what's going on. But where do they There's go? There's no institution. There's no, you have to go but, to the bush. But where? Who would guide you to the, the color, bush? Which bush do you go to? Do I go color? to? We, we all know every brown township, when you ask, uh, excuse me, I need to know more about healing. There's, one or two people, they're going to point to you immediately. That's living in your so, community. So it's and known within the community. Be, yes. The signposts are there. Yes. If not, people like me is requested to come to you. OK. All right. Yes. As so a channel, travel. as look a at, medium. Look at me. Look at me. I travel the entire Southern Africa. Why mainly? Not because I'm a human rights historian and a sound activist. But I'm also called abundantly, especially in Johannesburg, to do cleansings, to do dream readings, to make potions, to make oils, to do treatments that you think it only might find be found in a Sangomas like what is young medicine. But sometimes I deal in one day with both of those realities. And mm -hmm. if I can't handle it, then I advise the person further. Listen, yeah, um, I'm struggling I with this, do but that. I do recognize but I recognize who can, then you come with me to Uppington. If not Uppington, mm. Uppington will tell us, hey, here's your money back. You know how we work? I can't help this person go to Botswana this year. Mm. Your lineage so takes still, you to Botswana. Mm. So still, the, the medicine doesn't keep you still in one place. I don't have a muti shop, you know that. Yes. Somebody calls me house, right now. Your house is full of muti ever since I knew you, even before you took up this exactly. new identity. Well, not a new exactly. identity, but before you, you yes. always had medicine. We were always trying things. You're always, but of course, we always had the herb. Because that's you know? my right of passage. That's my okay. right of passage that did that. You understand? Even look at my graffiti. They were all plant based and medicine based. Most people didn't understand that. I was even you didn't understand it, maybe. I but did. But you were yeah. I mean, I was making, I was, I was making the herbal treatment from the age of five years old. I grabbed my again? first child. I, I was making herbal treatments since five years old, and my first child that I delivered was about say eight, nine years old. I'm sitting now with young. 300 kids. Yes. Even though okay. straight up, everybody we knows that shift. I was I was gang banging, I was hip hopping, but within that, I was healing my enemies and healing my friends. We couldn't afford medicine, mainly. We hmm. couldn't afford going to the clinic. Our clinic was burned down by Soviet. Okay, we, don't, we are going deeper. We don't want, yeah, we don't want to. Uh, we don't want to go riot. We don't want. To, our community didn't know riot. Our community didn't know uprising like that. For us, mm. uprising, everybody retract. Street until code. the men, until the men arrive and the men will sort it out. So that got us, you know, dislocated in many ways, not just neglect. So our our rights, primitive rights of access to care. I mean, girls was having period problems in my neighborhood. By 14 years old, I was helping that kid. Mm. I was cleaning their wounds. Mm. 
I didn't see any youngers doing that. So, excuse me, Q, are you saying this initiation begins first intuitively and personally before you meet the community? Because I said my second part of the question yeah. is the community that you are yeah. dealing with yeah. now. When I was born, like many like me, the day you are born and you come home, there's somebody waiting at home. That person rubs you out. When I say rub you out, you will, you will have a risk. We say rub out because we want to be kind. That child gets gets shaken. Yeah. All, all blocks of the parents removed. All trauma of the mom and dad removed. That's why we as Bushman men have no fear. Mm. Everything is removed then. Before the mother can say, my baby. No, my grand yeah. takes the child. Yeah, it's mm. not your child, it's our child. Okay. You understand? Mm, so you, get clean, you get clean, then you get a reading right there. That person burns the herbs, looks at your navel, reads the blood. This child's going to be this and this child. Q, I'm sorry. You are talking, I'm sorry, I want to clarify something. You are talking now of an atypical colored family. Most typical colored uh -huh. families are just Christian families. They're Christian you know, or they're Muslim. They are, or they we, are Muslim. Were made, we were made Christian, that, we were made Muslim. No, I understand that from the colonial point, but I'm just saying, on a typical sense, not everybody may have had the kind of family that has that kind of knowledge, but some families do, even yeah. amongst the Banguni, as I mean, Bantu, like Bantu, I Bantu, say, Bantu, brother, all that. This is information that might be shocking to everybody, but you yes. go to Eldorado Park, you go to Lubali, you go to Innerdale, you go to Easteris, you go to all these colored townships, they're all gonna sound like you. Now we know this since way back. So the tradi this tradition is just that we typical contemporary South Africans, we just don't understand. We don't know that they exist. No. We are thinking a colored child is raised either in, 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 the, in the mosque or in the church or no. non-religious and they're just South Africans. I mean, brother, you, you, anybody right now that knows a brown person, think for yourself, man. Call that person right now. We'll stand at the wall. Auntie, do you have um, brain rake in your yard? Auntie, do you, do you, do you have a bit of buku? Do you have a bit of roibos? You're going to have positive answers. Oh, because there's positive a collective answers. consciousness. Mm. Yes, harlemensis. You all know it as linen Dutch medicine. We, will make, we taught them how to make that thing. Mm. Skeletium. We taught them how to make skeletium. What is skeletium, Baba? Skeletium is what most people now are raping with white, black, Indian, colored, all of this. It's one of our top plants in the bushman. This plant gives you more power than the red bull. It, it does what? Energy. What does it do? It gives you energy. And if okay. you use properly, it can take you into a trance. A is it, is it, is, 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 at this moment, is it, sorry, I see you, Mankosi, is it endangered now or is it rife? Can you it's find about, it anywhere? It's already endangered since the 1930s. And what is the community doing about preserving it? We are going into the preservation, conservation space Nothing. now. Nothing. So it grows wild or it grows, it can grow in my yard right now. I've got plenty of Zumbani, I've got things growing here. Well, I've got. I've got you're in Artemisia. Hmm? You, have, you are in Johannesburg. Skeletium grows all over the country. It's just about How do I recognize it? the variety. Um, unfortunately, I can tell you it's green with the white flower, but many plants are just as <laughs> as many varieties. Some of them have got white flower with a black dot. Some of them is white flower with a yellow dot. Some of them are purple, blue, but it depends which one has the highest property. And that's where the danger comes in, the Bushman, because if I must tell you out of all the varieties, which one it is, don't you think that is naive of me and irresponsible to pinpoint? I got your point. So, I got your again, point. You know, I don't see this plant that much where it belongs, but these plants are there, and the divination plants and the important plants. It's if you look at the Bantin and Guni culture, I don't know what you call your divination plants. But as the sand culture, we don't have many. We don't, because we rely on dance and trance more in the spiritual realm than actually in this yeah, For understand? trance? Mm. It's organic, okay. it's totally organic. But there is other ways to use certain plants. The cat plant, everybody wants to go crazy. Cat, cat, cat. 
there's almost no more cat plants in our country. What happened to the cat but plants? Isn't it considered a drug? Cat, Bushman cat. tea. Well, that is written in your pharmaceutical book, you understand? But here's the Bushman. I use that as an antibiotic in helping new babies when they got yellow fever, when they're going through oh. yellow jaundice. I, I, I need to use that. So I don't give a damn if they say that's a drug. As a Bushman, I don't see that as a drug. Pause a bit. I would like us to, on the next section, I'm going to take some calls. I'm going to take some uh, comments from other people. But I, for the next slide of the question, are you drinking water or whatever? I would like us to talk about the institutions here in South Africa now that are looking into things like preservation uh, or, 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 or legislation and whether they are doing the job or they're not doing the jobs, who's doing their job properly, who's preserving and who's not, who's pretending and who's not, who's fake and who's false when it comes to the institutions now that are governing. We had this conversation with you, I think last week, about SAPRA and all these uh, traditional healers, institutions and all those kinds of things. I want us to go to that level when we come back. Uh, I would like to take Mankos's comment and take some uh, comments from uh, our audience on Facebook and everywhere. Thank you, Mkulu. Uh, so, Lazuli um, <clears throat> Mkulu, um, my, my, my question, eh, um, it's slightly related to what you guys were previously talking about, you know, um, just now. You know, uh, I look at the, um, the, the, the community in Soweto because that's where I'm currently based. You know, you're influenced by what you can see immediately with your eyes, you know. And I'm asking myself that when, based on my observation, uh, Mkulu spoke about a lot of rites of passages and some of them, same, same, like I always say this, that you must be careful of canceling things because you might end up canceling yourself in the process. The way that the initiation process happens within <clears throat> the Koi, the Bushmen uh, and the same people, you know, um, it's almost similar to the Bavenda people it, when I think about it, you know, it, and it's also similar to my people, Aban Baselangi. A healer is recognized from birth and a healer is raised by healers. Um, not in, in this sense. Yes, a healer is raised by other healers. I want us to go back to the part where do you think I'm 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 about to be a little bit political, but also in the traditional sense of the word, which is the current topic at hand. That do you think that some of the ills that we are facing as people, because I can see it in my community, that some of the ills that we are facing us as a black people, the reason why most of our men, I don't want to say young boys, because we've got 40 year olds now. Who are addicted to drugs it's no longer just a teenage phase or in those people have graduated to being men the reason why there are men who do not have families their fatherless kids and 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 is because of the lack of um the rights of passages and some of them i don't know uncle Menzo will translate for me because i feel like it will lose its essence if i say it in a different language to the point of and they end up to numb the voices in their head because they think that they think that it's it's not normal it's not normal or whatever they end up using substances to suppress the calling some of them they do and within the colored community because we see colored people as most people, I'm not saying everybody does, but most people, this is the, the what's this, the generalization that colored people are just a, a mixed breed of white men and black men. And then that continued off from there. And today in 2022, on the 11th of December, you, we clarified that the colored people are not just the colored people. They are also the Khoi, the Sen, the Bushmen, the Nam, and also there are parts of black people, which is part of my family. I they, they are classified mm -hmm. as colored mm -hmm. when they are not colored. Uh, it's group areas, I don't, don't, it split my family apart, but then it's, we are not there. Do you think that some of the ills is because people do not know their identity and some of these rites of passages have been skipped? 
and they need them and their ancestors are calling for that. I'm going to yes, allow you to answer to respond to that before we take uh, comments. It's, no, Coco, it's very important. Comment. Please That's answer really that. Important. My sister, thank you. First of all, for a woman to raise that, thank you. Number one, yes. You see, we as black people were given something that is very powerful. This thing ran through our surnames. Names in notes has been my topic for many, many years. These surnames hold manhood up. Within that surname, as Bantu and Nguni people, what I've learned is a butcher. But remember, we come from no surname. But what I've learned through my years hunting with Zulu, Basutu, Venda, hunting with men, I learned that in today's day and age, majority of your illness and sickness comes because these men were not either put for rights of passage, but these men were fooled in believing they had rights of passage. I get too much calls of Bantu and Nguni young men today. Just below my age, asking me, Chief, where do I go to find out who's the healer in my family? Mm. That, is, that is not acceptable. They understand where the trauma is coming. I own the stick. The stick is 300 years old. Comes in my family. I will crack a man's head in open, open in half. I will defend the stick like I would defend my matria, not patria, the sun. This stick has won many other sticks from honorable men, black men, Benda, Basut, Zulu. Today they are my babas. They consult. When I am in trouble, I consult Zulu and Basutu old men and try now. Yeah, not even my own. I own a whoop. Two days ago they sent me a whoop. Said that I need to come teach the children how to turn an, a bull into an ox. Be bully. I asked him why. He's like this fucking uh, men are 30 and 40 years old and they've never touched a cow in their life. Too. How is he gonna marry my daughter? Mm. Hey, now, when you look at that, that these are rural men asking me to stand in and translate to a Zulu man his rights of passage to English because he doesn't understand Zulu. Hey. To tell a man, a married man, that his wife's supposed to look so and so in public, and his, his basutu, and his basutu. This is because of lack of rights of passage. No matter what we say today on this thing, we are guilty of one thing, not that our parents didn't teach us. We became very lazy because of technology. We then now Google Isangoma. Blasphemy, man. Blasphemy. I, I know Sangoma healers since I was three years old. Three years old. My mother, grandmother entrusted me, threw me to them. I lived in Stanga, Mapumulu, in Dindingrubo, St. Lucia, Shushlue. And I didn't go there to learn Twasa. I went there to be a person as a witness in the future to tell the Zulu children, no, that's not right. You're supposed to do it this way. I'm not allowed to tell you. Today I'm that man and I don't feel proud of myself. So well, thank you, my sister. There's a large part of rights of passage removed due to your schooling, due to your TV, due to your Xbox. I've heard talk, I mean, I'm in big circles when it comes to technology and running around. And some of my friends are talking about apps for some garments. I mean, can't you see in the church of a swipe machine? Jesus pumping now. Uh, Granny still got diabetes. I'm still fixing elephantitis and swollen ankles of old people, but clearly can't and the children who work on it. I do it for free because my rights of passage says an elder is my, my everything, my, my doorway, the ancestral world is my ancestry. I walk on their mercies. I walk on their heads. I should have respect. Their shoulders are steps of gold. I should have respect going up that wasa in my life. Don't I got that. you. Yeah, I, I got your question. I got your answer very clearly. Uh, but yeah. before I even add anything to it, because I have so much to, to add to that, uh, because it's very important what you just said, uh, because somehow indirectly you are answering us by saying that you are raised by communities. You are, mm -hmm. you, you are raised by communities that are not that controlled makes by... Bushman. Excuse that makes me? me Bushman. That makes yes. me Bushman. 
you are saying that's not, a typical bushman. I can say I'm I can say I'm cool or I'm Haitian or I'm or yes. Nama or I'm Koe. Yes. But that is singular. I'm African. Mm -hmm. So Bushman is saying I'm African. Okay, I, I get it. I'm from all of this. Uh, as a Rasta man, I get what you are saying. I'm saying this from the Rasta perspective, even though I don't have my dreadlocks on. But yeah. as a Rasta man, as someone who's gone through the Rasta, uh, uh, I would call it initiation too, you know, rising and rising and falling and rising. Um, when you say there's a song, in fact, by a group called Midnight, which speaks about Bushmen. It says, I am a Bushman, I am a Cushman, I am a Cushman, I am a Bushman. And it has a lot of lyrics that are very powerful in it. People can just Google it. Group is called Midnight. Night with the N-I-T-E. The song is just called Bushman. It's from an album called uh, Ancient Maps. And he speaks about how people would use the word in a negative way. Yet he is saying, I am confirming that, yes, I am a Bushman. You wow. know, but this is the man, this is the man from Caribbean, not even Jamaica, he's in the Caribbean island of St. Croix. He's confirming. And he says he traces his lineage through etymology, through biology, through botany. He traces his lineage to Congo, to Zimbabwe, to a, 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 a Chad, you know, but that's another story. But the point now is, uh, I said, I'm gonna leave it to comments. If sister has some comments and other people have some comments, can we open our lines before I even go deep into this? Because I'm saying, I understand what you are saying from a Rastaman perspective. The fact that you are raised by a community and that community is the African community, for lack of a better word, we use this word African. Oh. Some of us just call it Kemetic. Some of us call it, if you're a Rasta, you'll say, I'm an Ethiopian. No matter what tribe you come from, Rastas call themselves Ethiopians. And they don't mean Ethiopia, the province in East Africa, or the nation. They mean Black universally, just like a Black consciousness person. When they say I'm Black, they're not saying I'm Zulu. And they're not denying their tribe, but they are saying, they are affirming the universality of blackness. Um, comments, Gogo. Any comments on the ne on the networks before we continue? We, do not, the... we do not currently yeah? have any comments uh, from Facebook, but we have greetings. We have a greeting from Tabo Matafu. He's saying, we have a greeting from Mugang Mugeli. Um, we have a greeting from Slim and we have Uayanda. Oh, okay, I missed this one. It probably just came in right now. Um, so she said, rites of passage are hand in glove with spirituality. Ayanda, this is Unda Bezi. Ayanda Daba says, rites of passage are hand in glove with spirituality. Nowadays, boys are dying left, right, and center in the Eastern Cape, and the core of the boys dying during the rituals is on spiritual level, not just any spirit, but the spirit of truth and is truth in any language, race, ethnicity, etc. Sorry, can you repeat the part about it's the spirit of they are dying because there's the spirit I met. <clears throat> Nowadays, boys are dying left, right, and center in the Eastern Cape. Um, and the core of the boys dying during the, that right ritual is on a spiritual level, not just any spirit, but the spirit of truth. And the truth is the truth in any language, race, or ethnicity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I get it, you know, some of these boys, it's because you, they don't know who they are. If you don't know who you are, like you will let it, everybody can tell you who you are and you will believe it. <laughs> Hence first. And I, I, I agree with who I am in a sense that I always, it sounds silly when I say it all the time. Uh, you know, if you don't know who you are, Anybody can come and tell you that you, you are colored when you know very well that colored is, you're not colored. There's no, for me personally, I feel there's no such thing as a colored person. The concept does it. not exist because some of our black brothers, because they were light-skinned, were classified as colored. If you're a cursor, 
and if you are a nam, you are a nam. If you are koi, you are koi. And if you are sen, you are sen. So therefore, if you are, if your father is a white person, therefore you are white. If your father is black and they mated with a white, you are black. There is, I don't know, I could be corrected tomorrow. There's no such thing as a colored person. I, I, I get you, but I don't want us to go back to that debate, to that question right now on purpose, because we have kind of dealt with it a little bit. But I get you and appreciate what you're saying. Uh, what I would like to do is touch maybe on what I understand, and then we can get back to what I understand said, uh, what you've quoted there, and uh, the issue of the uh, people dying during, during an African ritual, which is recognized as nationally, and which a lot of things have been done uh, to stop those deaths from happening, yet they don't stop happening. Q, what Very is important. your take on the death at initiation level? Because for me, it all lies well, with, the, brother, with, with the people doing the initiation, the ones who are actually well, the men there. Yeah, you but know, that's just me. What's your take? You know, I, I traveled a lot, man. Mm. I've traveled a lot, and mm. I, I, I beg to differ. It's not spiritual, it's psychological. Mm. Um, why I say it's psychological, I have evidence, you know. I sat in a house, very close friend of mine, and she was the love of my life. I can't mention her name on top, public, quite an influential family. And she was one of my best, best friends. And also, mm. I recognize that she's a healer. We all did, all her friends. The sister of mine died in a drowning. She's a gold middle swimmer, you know. She died in a in a drowning. And okay. she's a gold, she's a gold middle swimmer. A traditional initiation, you mean? Yes. And okay. this is because the church thought she was losing her mind. Okay. Now there's where I can direct you something like that. Majority of the deaths I've seen is because of involving things into our ways that should not be long there. Why take a child that you can see everybody saying has a spiritual African problem, but you take the child to a church? Mm -hmm. Why do that? Your first lesson was what? Go find somebody elder in our community to diagnose this problem quickly. So we each know, my first child go to a Nyanga or somewhere. Maybe they think they it's exorcism. But then now the church overrules that. They need to exercise this child. So in the name of the God, Lord Jesus, do I grow, do I grow here? They go drown this child. I've seen it hundred times. Then you mm. find even more disturbing things. I've hunted in the Kosa Highlands a bit. And I found these two boys. The, 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 their cutting was done wrong, very wrong. I found them infected and I treated them with plants they should have known. That the, your rights of passage is never too far away from the plants you need if anything go wrong. That's your first rights of passage. I don't care who you are. If you're going for manhood in the bush, you are taught you get hurt by this, by that. These boys didn't even know that. I found them with their penis swollen bigger than their kneecap. Now, when I looked at the cut, that cut wasn't done with the instrument they should have used in this day and age. Why is our healers still not equipped with surgical units? Who is Why? supposed to be taking, making sure that that happens, Q? Let's just get Department straight to of the Health. Department of Health, Department of Health, Sanka, HIV cancer. Are they allowed in the mountain? They have four by fours. No, are they, they allowed budgets. by the traditionalists? Are they allowed to be in the mountain? We are, living, we are living in a day and age, brother, that has happened many times in the African community, where we are targeted with illnesses that we can no longer just battle with what we have. What we have is a, 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 a germ situation. Do you understand? So the least we need to talk to our House of Traditional Leaders. We need to talk to the Council of Traditional Healers that we need some basic form of first aid and basic form of understanding what is surgical utensils. We are no more where I 
sin. I know men that could circumcise you with a glass bottle here. They did. They no longer exist. I know men that could circumcise you with a bamboo. Shah. Mm. Shah. Mm. They don't exist. They could not even give their rights of passage because me and you come from the 90s, you understand, where we ran away rurally to go make it. Today we go back home with grandchildren and children that was not allowed. Let me put it this way, Q. To rephrase your answer like this, the science is being lost. The science is being lost and also we are failing to blend our tradition with existing emerging sciences about, you know, you talk about surgical cutting, but at the same time, you are talking about using natural implements to do the very same job, yet at the same time, also know what are the herbs that are necessary to help a person who is in trouble, who others been cut yeah. wrong, or has an infection, yeah. or has a, what, what, what do they call it, comorbidities, for example. So there in the mountain, everything is being done rudimentary. I want to mention this because we are coming from a chemistic school of thought as a company. We come from a, 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 an Africa of scientific scientific invention, not just in Kemet, but throughout Africa. We've had surgeries. People have done brain surgery, heart surgery, all kinds of surgery, even a circumcision without anyone dying for years, for millennia. Yeah. But now we are living in an age of scientific adv advancement, yet somehow we're still allowing young men, even in one life lost. I saw five were killed recently. I saw it in the news yesterday uh, when I was reading something. Yeah, Those five is too many. The other, the yeah, other man, the other year it was twenty. The other year it was thirty. I think there was even another year where there was sixty. So the thing is, man, who's going there happening? and counting? Who's going there and counting? I don't find nobody in the bush. I find mm. them sitting in the clinic. The clinic is a hundred kilometers away from where we actually do these things. Well, it's a they statistic that comes from somewhere. It's exactly. a statistic. They don't come into the bush. They go to the clinic. Mm. They get their stats from the clinic. Ain't no clinic out there when there's black kids playing in the bush. Well, my brother, they are, when they there. come back, they live in communities. When they come back, they go to the clinic and parents report a death. People know what this death happened through these circumstances. You know, spiritual deaths are not reported. Mm. But there, people, last week, people drowned. Do you know how don't you call it a spiritual I'm, death? How are you going to know in the parents? people that drowned. Where's the guidance, Menzi? Where's the guidance? Back in the day, there was an old man and an old woman sitting there while that man doing his thing to make sure they guide him to do that thing properly. Today, Who's responsible? Who's re they, they, no one's re taking responsibility. But within a spiritual death, if I'm mourning and you tell me my child died while becoming a man, it is honorable for you to bury him now, a man. Mm. Do you think that parents mm -hmm. are going to go report that death? That death is not reported. Maybe how many of them are there? Mm. Muslim, okay, you know, can I, I suggest we have this as a topic. I suggest we have this. As, Ayanda has opened the can of worms within this topic. I'm sorry, Coco. I'll talk to you right now about. Uh, we, 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 I'm going to allow you to speak right now. But I just wanted to say that Ayanda is opening a, 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 a topic which I think would require us to sit as ispire. We need a community meeting, not a Zoom meeting between one, because Q, yeah. there's a whole lot of things that we are planned, we are planned to talk about, but our time is running out. Yeah. We need this topic discussed on a serious level uh, in, a, in a referendum and have a referendum and have some action points because we, for years we've been discussing it, but they are not, there's no action. We don't yeah. see action I mean, because the people that we're expecting to be responsible are not responsible, yeah. whether it's in traditional leaders, doctor, Mm -hmm. In our community, we have the same problem. There's mm -hmm. these dancers and these Khoisan people now all over the show teaching people how to dance and talk a language. Are you sure it is their language? Are you sure it is their dance? Are you sure it is their rights of passage to dance the that dance? And, mm, the There's these <laughs> things that we need to discuss, but the guidance is no longer found because of ignoring the elders. Mm. Thank you. Mangos. I wanted to say that there's no count. I wanted to add on what Q was saying is that there's no count because a drowning uh, will be classified as a drowning. And they won't say it was during a, a rite of passage, don't don't, or whatever. But it was a baptism. Last say, week it was a baptism. 
Christian there, baptism. Very few, it's very few that will be classified as rites of passage. They will, they will just yeah. say during a ritual, they'll just say, no, Menzi drowned or Menzi died of an infection yeah. or men, because even when you twasa, ne? There are deaths there because the, yeah, the the last ritual is very dangerous and it's very deadly. And they will just say, ah, suffocation or whatever, or poison, or but don't, suffocation don't. Of where? No, I'm just saying under G, they classify it uh, based on cause of death. They will not say the yeah. deaths are incorrect. You know, they will not say that Umenzi was performing this ritual. And so therefore, this is what caused the death. They'll just they will just uh classified the was was the classified as the symptom and not the root cause and where else when it's classified appropriately they will go back and look at what went wrong um is it the healer that did not know the correct process or did the child have problems in their lineage or mm. or whatever or is it the environment or and, and yeah. it could be but it's they're not classified correctly, so therefore the, that's why the problem is not being solved. All right, cool. thank you. Uh, I, I I still say we need a, a a proper space to do this particular one. I would like us to get back to this one, not to ignore this pressing and and and, and problem yeah. letting us. But I'd like us to give it enough time that it it deserves and have certain people present within among us so we can discuss it to, to its fullness and come up with solutions. For now, I'd like to go ask, like uh, us to go into the future. Future. We, Excuse we me. for the social ne? Yes. The comments. Uh, okay. it's, there's a few comments before we um, please. I think they will lose the, yeah, they'll lose their essence if we continue. Um, when we when we see the pain our plants are in, as you have said doing quiet how do we recognize and safeguard the spiritual property of the people who walk this land there's another comment um there's um who slim cat so after um, has just spoken she made a comment she said even in the closer community if a person starts acting strange or has strange sickness especially mental related sicknesses there's a saying that goes udina usigo, meaning a lack of certain rites of passage, certain rites of, of passage. And Ayanda Ndaba says, true mkulumens, um, um, there is a shortcut when going about with the rituals. These, yo, guys, I, I'm sorry, ne? but I may butcher someone's language here. Um, I'm, I'm apologizing in advance. But, it is yeah, away. Monkey. babe, Monkey. There is a preparation that is done by one who is going to do the cutting. The boys also have to be holistically prepared. No sexual intercourse before going to the mountain. Also, the herbs that I use are gradually becoming scarce. Yay, yay, I can talk till the cows come home. As Amatrubi, Aweko Amakwenkwe, Angabunio, I feel strongly about this because I am a mother of two boys. Um, please, Mkulmenzi, I anticipate the topic uh, re circumcision and Kosim. Uh, Mogang Mogeli says true, and there was a movie that tried to highlight Oguya and Dabe Nukwa fan. Okay, that's about it um, from the comment sections and from the uh, in terms of uh, adding on on this topic. I want to check on Zoom if there are any additional. Uh, oh, Resonate says collaboration of ancient and the best of current lays with the foundation for the healing arts of the future. Mm, I like, please repeat that again. The collaboration of ancient and the best of current lays the foundation for the healing arts of the future. Mm. That is from this resonate with you. Oh, resonate well. All right, our, 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 our brother. 
Um, so, you know, all right, thank you. I, I, I would like us to, for, because we've got uh, 10 minutes left, um, I would like us to cue, to touch on the issue of uh, preservation. We touched a little bit on it earlier, of conservation. What in your experience right now as a healer and a herbalist, which are the herbs right now that are facing serious extinction that you think that we can do something about? And what do you think we can do to ensure as a community of healers, what can we do to actually make sure that they don't die out? I hope my question was clear. Yes, your question is clear. Um, first mm -hmm. of all, it's not one plant, it's all plants. All okay. plants. It's all plants. Okay. People, we are we are living in a day and age overran not only by asphoxia. People are not flushing the, the things they should flush down the toilet. People don't really understand what deodorant does and what soap does to wetlands. People don't really know. It's not your big pieces of plastic that I'm worried about and everybody else. Environmentalism. It's these tiny pieces and these small things that goes into places that can't be repaired, especially over small term. When it comes to poaching, it's sad. As an experienced herb picker, I have to pick according to blood types. I have to pick according to, to, to what a person's allergic to. I need to pick according to your, your illness. If, if, if you phone me and you say, Q, um, I need you to come to me and fix my, my diabetes and my cancer, help me reduce my cancer. I'm not going to take no medicine with it. I'm going to go and get medicine on the way Consultant. to you. Consult first, yes. yeah. Yes, on the way to you, I'm guided already. This plant, that plant, this plant, that plant. How to dry it to make that treatment. How to cure it to make that treatment. Are you going to tincture, purge? Are you going to make a decoction? Are you going to ferment? Are you going to gel? Without using chemicals. It, these are the things you need to know as a healer. Not just picking it, because if you're just picking it to a poacher, I don't care who you are. You are taking something you have no right to touch. If you do not have the knowledge, there's dandelion. Everybody wants to heal the whole world. You're neglecting one plant found in abundance. Heals everything in a woman. But they want the best of this plant and that plant. That gets somebody to go and poach. So we as society need to, as, 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 as people requesting healing, also understand one thing. You need to question the man that's bringing your plant. You need to ask him ethical questions. Where did he take it? Does he often go to that area? Doesn't he maybe regulate and go to other areas? Why you're only picking in one area? Imagine that it appears in that. What is the size of an African potato to be half? People don't believe me when I say you can only harvest an African potato that's 15 to 20 years old. That is as big as my head. I've never seen, other than photos I had, African potatoes that big. But yet I see everybody else sell these things, these little small things with no nutrients in them. Mkulu, just on that one, you know, during the, H, the, the, the height of HIV and AIDS uh, uh, a pandemic, I, I, use, I use the word pandemic even for HIV and AIDS, uh, the, the last time I saw those size of African potatoes was in the rural areas when it was being sold very highly, very expensively. Besides, some would sell it as it is, some would sell it in a, 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 a already processed in a bottle or whatever. But those are the last times I saw one yeah, size. What, what would you do if I tell you that it's not the African years ago. potato? That, it's not the African potato. If mm. you want real healing from that thing, it comes from the leaves and the flowers. Mm. The potato Say is again. there to feed baboons. The potato is there to feed baboons. You get mm. much more nutrient in the leaf and the, the stem and the flower of the African plant. They but people want that bitter the stuff. They want that bitter stuff, that root. Guess what? It does it, it, it has a very limited. A it has things. a very limited. It's very limited. It's not what people think. That is the, 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 the your white textbook that teaches you that bullshit. It's not like that. What we're talking about is an African potato and when and how to use it. You may not harvest it at certain times. That is many long years. 
Number one, it's the food of the baboon. If you understand the story of baboon and that thing, you will not harvest too much. She's controlled and he's controlled by that thing. Minus that, our brother Joe is on this chat. We'll tell mm. you what baboon does in his backyard because they can't find African potato on the mountain. There's no more to have. Mm. Mm. It's found on the streets of Cape Town, Joburg, mm. Randburg. You Try it up. We need to teach people, not just conserving. What does one potato do? I can treat a thousand people with one potato. Mm. Why would mm. you need to harvest 50? Mm. Why would you need to go cut all the, 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 the Volda Dacha? You need to need we... first know which Volda Dacha to drink. There's one that you can drink and there's one that you can't drink. Can I the ask? The one that you can't drink gives you kidney damage. Mm. Can I ask one thing? Can we, as healers, create our own, not just standards, but policing, for lack of a better word? Can we protect, can we form a, 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 a protective a, a, a shield a, 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 a for our plants? Yes or no? Yes, and we if, can. Yes, how? Yes. Yes, we can. We can become honorary office to herbalism and natural healing. Being an honorary officer, unfortunately, you're not going to get paid, but you do have, uh, how can you say, access to teach people, not access to harvest. That's a different thing. We need to get access into the park. The only reason why things are disappearing in the parks is because there's no school kids visiting. There's no people visiting. Those prices of those parks are too high. We need to drop those prices. We as healers can do that, not the community. Access to the natural because, park? Because... Are you because that's about where we want to, to do our healing. Mm. Yes, that's where I want to do my healing, where I need to also teach preserving. I need access to the mountain. I need access to the, 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 the government park. Why is there no access? What do you mean? How come there's no access to the mountain? I was in the mountain this morning with well, another brother. brother. Some of the mountains that has actually got the fertile plants and things, we need money. Mm. You understand? And if I Are they owned? Are they private? The government owned land. The government owned land. But Rangers. But government land is your land. I'm sorry. Well, unfortunately, policies don't say that. If that ranger finds me on that land, I can explain myself as the qualified healer. But normal people wanting to, to go learn would go can go to church. Mm. Okay. Last question. I'm gonna give you a last question. Um healing. What is the role of the mouth? I'm going to Tehuti now because I'm going to close with a reading of, uh, uh, of something from the ancient scripts uh, translated for the modern era. What is the role of your speech, your mouth, your tongue? Uh, specifically, maybe speak from the Bushman perspective because uh, let me give you a, 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 a context of how I'm asking this question. I was even telling my wife this, this uh, yesterday. Oguti, I spoke last week to a Masego man, an elder, Professor J.M. Masego. Uh, he has written some certain books about the Masego history. He told me something very shocking. I hope you're not offended by what I am going to say. He, he, has, he has studied Nguni and Southern African history deeply. He says kings, typically, we're talking about kings and, and things. He says kings are gangsters. They are righteous gangsters and they are wicked gangsters. Uh, the wicked gangsters use black magic. Umutomnyama is the word he used. I'm, I've got the protection here about black and white medicines. White, not in race, but white and black. He says typical kings in, ancient, in old Africa, just pre-colonial Africa, would consult the Bushmen. Every king who rules over a large extent of land, would go to the Kalahari or would go to Namibia or would go to where the Bushmen are still living the Bushmen life and would find the healers there or the so-called witch doctors, so-called. And more than the medicines that they will give him and the rituals that they will take him through, him and his family sometimes, He's talking General Nguni. Then that Bushman would teach him codes that are not in his language, that the codes that are only 
found in the Bushmen tongue, tongues. And with those codes, he would be able to subdue not just his enemy, but his own people to have absolute love and devotion and obedience. So he'd use Bushmen magic for power, Bushmen magic for magic. submission. He, he, he was using the word magic for particular reasons, but then he uses, he said, my question is this, Umkulu said to me that the, 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 the words, the tongue, what is being taught, what this man gets taught and what he uses, what he speaks is greater than the muti, the medicine. We call it yeah. the sound. He said the sound is sound. more powerful. Than, so that's my question to you. That's my last question to you. What is the power of the tongue and what, why, what is it about the Bushmen that the kings in pre-colonial Africa would use? And he's saying even now, because he was mentioning, I won't mention kings' names, but he, would see, he, was, he was telling me straight that some of these modern, he called them gangsters. I'm not saying that. He, that's what he's saying. Yeah. These gangsters, uh, because he was saying that gangsters because they rule by might, by, 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 by force and blah, blah, in, especially in those days. Killing of the lion. The lion is all about killing the lion. It's all about posing with the lion. There's something in the lion essence that is used in secret rituals and blah, blah, blah. I won't go into that. What is it about the Bushmen and power? Well, we don't claim power, first of all. That means mm. we recognize it and we do. The power of the sound. You know, you always say the calling, the calling. My calling is a sound. I've been following mm. it since small. The sound is unique, it's amazing. It gets me feeling no fear. You've seen me in action since small, it's young, you understand? You still see what I'm doing. I do not bear no ounce of fear. I am a healer huntsman. In this, I was never taught to go left or right, but straight to do anything. This shapes a different mind. Maybe. And when you look, when you look at where, where we're heading today, with having that power and freeing your mind by minimizing yourself from everything. The Japanese call it hakuri, to study the art of being dead. Now, if the you look at being the, Bushmen, dead. the art of living like you are dead, you, you don't need anything. You minimize everything. Now, mm. the Bushmen, there's nothing we have held on but the ground we stand on. And that gives us age and experience. This can use like anybody. If I'm gonna, I get calls, Q, I'm crossing, you know, I know people, I only know you drove from Bloomington to Rwanda in Angola. Could you please give me advice? I'm only giving advice to that man because you know I drove from Bloomington to Rwanda, 19,000 kilometers, and I drove it, and he knows I did. So that makes me a very experienced person to give that advice over that terrain. That means I know the a person like me moved to that terrain. That person knows I know the food, I know where the water is, I know where the poison is, I know which ethnic, ethnic groups are there. I can hunt, I can survive. So getting advice from me is this. These are what these kings needed. They needed not advice from the council within the circle. They needed advice from council outside the circle that existed before their council. We I are get you. Ancestral so knowledge. If you want to know, if you want to know anything further than Timbuktu, it was the Bushman elders who would see, the seers, the oracles. So today still, yes, I see the Tswana, like royalty a lot coming to Gandhi, you know, asking things. And I see people from Zimbabwe, there are lots of them come because they still believe that we don't have magic. But you, what, 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 you said it's not magic. What is it? No. What we, is it about the language? We got clear direct link to, to what we can't describe. Even we don't have the devil, for example, we have the devourer. And you can describe the devil in a million ways. We're going to describe the devourer. Now imagine that we got one trauma to describe, but many other people got all these ranges of trauma to describe spiritually. But we have just that one. That's how far we are minimized in seeing and feeling when it comes to the world. We feel the world more than the rest. You understand? Healing. We feel it, and the sound is not like, no, that sound does things in your mind, your thoughts, your actions, your rites of passage. If you don't have rites of passage, you can't hear that sound. Okay, all you right, we're about to wrap up. 
Yeah. We are about to wrap up, but I want to ask one thing. Like is it good and evil? Is, Can it be used for good and evil? As a Bushman, there's, there's no evil. Mm. There's no evil. There's only life and death. You exist and you don't. You can take something okay. and gain from it, and later on you can lose it. That's the way of the world. That's, that's life. To call it bad luck means that you are caught in an idea and an illusion. Because awesome. things are just images of the mind, where life oh. is actually things to partake. It's not plain. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. I would like to ask if there's any comments from our audience before I read the passage that I'm going to close with and then give you. Coco, any comments from the people or anyone who wants to say something? No one, if someone wants to say something, we've got a few minutes. We don't have any comments from Facebook. Uh, it's only the ones that I have uh, read already. Um, on the chat, we don't have anything uh, apart from the stuff that we have already read, but I would like to, if there is somebody who would like to verbalize their thoughts, uh, please do uh, raise your hand. So that's now Kulum Songking is courtesy one. I'm just going to give like five seconds uh, or 10 seconds uh, just to observe that part. And then we give the mic to whoever raises the hand. But if there's nobody, we continue. Okay, I would like to say something, you know. Please, and please do. Out of my own, before we go further, Mindy, sorry, my brother. You know, everybody always asks me, Q, how, how did it begin? It's a very important question. Until few, few, a week ago, I could really explain. So the world's view as well, we see how creation began is in a story again. But you say, these, this story, the insects in it and the environment described is very unique text, if I have to say it in native tongue, which I, I really can't. Uh, the German nerve damage restricts me to higher clicks because we also have silent clicks. You know, like you have silent words in your alphabet. We actually have four clicks. And then there's other silent ones that we can't make, but find in in the sound. So what I'm gonna tell you is the world view on how the first Bushman was created. But in this story, in an English perspective, it's very limited. It's very limited to even be answering because English is not my language and it is not a way to describe spiritual things. But we will try. Before Earth was created, and I need you all to look at a very old story that I can honestly say could be considered one of the first of the first. It's in paintings, it's in rock paintings, dated very, very long. So long that we don't want to believe the carbon is last 300,000 years. So before Earth had everything, there was this dark water. We don't know if it was flat or round or square. This dark water, as the story goes, there was a bee, and this bee was carrying a mantis in its feet, and the mantis was cradling a sea. And this bee kept flying, flying, flying all around the world, looking for land, it could not find land. And the bee symbolized the wisdom of the Bushmen at that time. So the water was what we were, with where we were. Most people would say darkness, we don't see this dark. This bee flew and got tired. And the more tired it got, the lower it went to almost touching the water. The bee finally found a flower. So saw a flower floating and had its opportunity to rest and you know, put the, the mantis, the very important being down with its gift. As it put it down, the bee drowned it, fell into the water and lived its expectancy. It carried this knowledge as far as it could be it a god or be it a deity, whatever the bee symbolizes, went back into the water, like in all our spiritual beliefs, and vanished. Most people would say die, we would say black people to take a reshape into what it belongs to. Them. The mantis then wakes up on this flower and opens up its arms where it sees the seed. When it places the seed down on the flower, 
that is how the first Christian was created. From there becomes what we are, the Southern African nation, our world view of the men. In this desire, the sun is not a normal person. The sun comes out of the armpits of a man. This man has not been named. The, 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 the stars is his blanket. It's an old blanket with holes in it. So when he covers himself, he sees the, what you see as a galaxy, we see as blanket. The rain and rain clouds is a person, a woman. She wears the rainbow as a, as a, as a belt around her waist. That's why you see our ladies have got these colorful around the waist, mostly a neck around the neck, because she's great. She and the person or the being or the energy that created Earth, they have children on Earth, they call Bushmen. And the first punishment there was when them shouted at what Bushmen created for killing the Bushmen. And she punished them with severe weather since then till now. We have the ostriches, mantises. Mantis is very important. Um, the moon is his shoe and it leads him home. He knows where it is. When the moon goes black, he can shape shift. He can do whatever. I worship the mantis. I don't believe in God. I believe in the mantis and I use the sun as my main form of getting what I need in spirituality as well as in person. This mantis has got children. One is a dasi, a rock rabbit. One is a, um, one is an adopted child. They are a porcupine. She is the daughter of, 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 of the, the evil person, the bower, you understand, calling the all great the bower, the darkness, the great darkness in that can corrupt anything and destroy anything whenever it wants to. It's very naughty. And mantis shape shifts to fool this thing and use magic, trickery. Because mantis is the one who can use magic, the others can't. He was allowed to, because they're not allowed to trick things, and trick people, and trick nature. So all these things are our world story, how it works. Um, how fire was created the first time, why we were punished. We stole fire out in the the, the wing of um, under the wing of, of, of ostrich, we, we snatched it and we ran. And then we taught mantis taught the bushman how to make fire. And we got punished for that. That's why animals don't talk to us no more. Now there's the water snake. How 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 who is she? She turns into an elephant. She's got a horn that's very magical. She destroys the darkness. Only she can fight this thing because she's got this magical horn. Um, you see. I would have a totem of an elephant that has a horn. Kuntima. She does battle for it. Who is Baboon? Baboon is my brother. Before he had hair and a tail, he was naughty. He killed Mantis' son. And then Mantis punished him by putting a stick up his bum and a stick between the tail. So he plays on the mountains and he has got no balance because of that tail. He doesn't want to. There's people with, with tails that, that, that washes the moon. These are things from our rites of passage and culture that, that has been described through people like Pedro, Mutuan, and then they couldn't really explain because they were only told stories of what we are, but not the final codex of what the belief system is. This is our worldview, people. No, what thank you, you for this. is a remarkable story of how you began, not me alone. You know what? We'd like to call you back for this one because it's an important one. Uh, the, the, the story of the koi, the sand, the nama, the bushman, as you say, is half told in South Africa. There's a huge misunderstanding. There is a, a, a huge misconception. Uh, and I think some of the powers that be are trying to create enmity between Abanguni and Abambo, Amashubi, Abantu, uh, and, and, I mean, and the bushman. It's being created. I greet you with respect. I greet you with more respect than you greet yourself. I greet you the way your name says, Mba. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know how to call your name. You don't even know how to call your name. Say it again. Ngo. Mba. Okay. Mm. No, That's give... your name. So mm. to call you and your ancestral name properly is the highest giving I can give. 
We give thanks. That's the word sound power. Yeah. We'd like to call you back for this particular story. This is what I wanted to say in conclusion. Uh, we have run out of time, Q. Uh, there's a whole lot that we can discuss. We can like to give thanks to your ancestors and give thanks to you and give thanks Thank to you, all the powers that be that give you the, 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 the gave you the, 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 the opportunity to be here with us. I'd like to give thanks to our audience on Facebook and our audience here on It Can Be Natural Healing. Uh, Q, yeah. we will call you back. You'll definitely be coming back. But yeah. I would like us to start in the end. When you come back, I would like us to start with these stories so that we can unpack them for the meaning okay, that cool. is within them. We know that there's yeah. lots of meaning in them. Thank you so much for your time, King. Yeah. Well, if anybody mm -hmm. want to get hold of you, so if they want to get hold of you, iyxafrica.com. 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 You will find him there. I think there's a site, and I think there is a blog or something. Blog, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram. And your number and for those who need the herbs um, from the Bushman perspective. Bushman Q7. Bushman Q7. That is your email. It's Instagram. Cool. Oh, it's on Instagram. Oh, we'll send it on the gram. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll send it. We'll send it around on our on our on our social medias. I'd like to just say thank, thank you. you. I was gonna read, but I won't read anymore because time is has, has been eaten by uh, the dog. Later. And it's beautiful that you mentioned the papoon and the ibis and the giraffe because all of these are part of the Tehuti uh, tree of life symbology yes. uh, system yes. that we are in right yes. now. That's, so that's my path finding. The your path the yeah. Called what? Hemsbok, Oryx. Ah, Hemsbok. Give thanks greatest for that. Greatest healer, the greatest healer other than the elephant. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. I will not read none of this stuff uh, now because time has, uh, has lapsed, but truly and truly grateful. See you on the other side. Thank you, my sisters. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for holding space with us. Uh, please catch us on our Instagram for those who did not get um, the first, the beginning of the session or may have joined us late. We will be uploading this video on our YouTube page. We are Ikambi Natural Healing, YouTube, Facebook, as well as Instagram. That is what we go by, Ikambi Natural Healing. Please catch uh, Mr. Q7 Umkulu. Q7 um, at uh, Bushman Q7 uh, on Instagram. Um, to, uh, inbox us for his numbers. We will provide them to you um, <clears throat> so that you can speak to him directly. But I think you can also inbox him directly. Um, if you want to speak to him, you don't have to via through us. If you resonate with the spirit, uh, please, 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 please contact him and let's keep the chain of, of, of keeping each other uh, going uh, forward. Tamago Ashe. Tamago, ni, ni, hambe kashenon.